In this video, I'm gonna show you how to streamline and automate the content creation process, how to easily capture ideas, how to sort through those ideas and get them on a recording calendar, and finally, how to set up your cloud file structure so that you can easily capture those recordings on the cloud so that your team can use those and edit them in the post-production process easily. Let's do this. I'm gonna be going through this sample Airtable database. It's a lot like the content database that I use that helps me store all the content that I've ever created with easy links to the copy, the images, and all the media. This is how I really streamline the entire content creation process from ideation to distribution and to analytics. Oh, and by the way, if you want access to free courses and tools, make sure to check out my new content academy. It's a new community that I just launched where entrepreneurs and content creators can come together and help each other out. Make sure to check the link in the description of this YouTube video. Now let's jump into the Airtable database. You'll see that I use this tool a lot. It's really just like a spreadsheet on steroids. I can create rows and columns and store different types of data with the various columns that I want to track. In this case, I'm storing content ideas and those ideas that I actually want to record through the recording process. One of the best places to start is probably new ideas. How do you actually capture all those ideas that you think about during the day? One thing that's cool about Airtable is that I can create different forms. I can design a form that captures the information that I outlined in the tables. In this case, I'm trying to keep it easy where I only store the idea of that content. And when I click on this, it's going to open up a form where I can enter in those ideas. And once this form is open, I can type in whatever I want to and then I can just click submit and then I can submit another response if I'd like. And what's cool is that I can actually take this URL and put it on my phone if I'm out and about and I want to capture ideas while I'm on the go. And then all of those new ideas are going to be captured in this inbox under ideas. You can see here I have the interview with Gary Vee. I can also add new ideas directly here if I'd like or I can add them in the form. And then periodically, most likely in my content planning meeting, I can go through all these ideas and start to sort through them. The first thing I'm likely going to do is just select what type of event this is. Over on this tab here, I've created a series of different types of events, whether that event should be repurposed or not, and I'll show you how this checkbox is used later. I can also check my recording checklist and then also create a template recording script. What this lets me do is create a template document that I can use for each type of event. So if I click this button here, it's going to open up a vlog script. And then here I can type out whatever I need for a vlog script so that every time I record, I have that information. I can also create these variables, which I can fill in from column data here and I'll show you how to use that in just a bit. So now let's head back to the events and now we've got all of our ideas. So like I said, likely what I would first do is go through here and select what type of event each of these are. In this case, these are both interviews. In this case, this is a vlog style video. And now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and select the production workflow. So if you're like me, you're gonna have a lot of different ideas and we can start to use this status to sort through them all. Maybe, and definitely let's go ahead and plan to do that one. So once I've sorted through that, you're gonna notice that they disappear from the inbox and then I can start to use this planning section and the way I've separated each of these different things to go ahead and get them onto a calendar. So if I jump over to interviews, I'm gonna see those two interviews here. I can obviously put in a few notes. And then again here, I can see that production workflow. So so if I'm sure I want to have a specific interview or I know that person's going to come through, I can start to actually plan that out. And then it's going to start to separate these different ideas by whether it's a maybe or I should definitely plan it. And if I know I'm ready to record, I can go ahead and pick a recording date. I'll go ahead and pick February 21st. And then I can move the status to record. And then you'll see that it will fall off this list, the planning list, because it is now scheduled. And if I check out the calendar, I'm going to see that on the February the 21st, the interview with Gary Vee, and that will ultimately trigger some automations to make sure that I have the script that I need with all of the information that I typed into the fields here, and then also the folders that I need so that once that recording is done, someone can drop all of those videos into the system, into the Google Drive, and then I can facilitate the rest of the production workflow. So now if we jump down into the workflow here, we can look at the production workflow, and we can see that we have access to a Kanban style board, which has different statuses for the post-production workflow. We know we need to actually record the video, then we need to edit it, and and then we'll be done and then we can finally close that out. You're obviously free to change the different statuses here to whatever you need. And one of the things that you're gonna see which is pretty cool is that we also have access to the folder and if I click this, this is gonna open up the Google Drive which was automatically created on our behalf to store all the information for this interview. And you're also gonna see this script that was duplicated earlier. So if I open this up, you're gonna see that 
we were able to insert what event it is, the notes that we had written down earlier, and then we're ready to fill in the rest of the information of this video. Now, in this case, this is obviously an interview, so your interview script is gonna look a little bit different than what we have here, but just to show you how that works. And then we also have a place to store all the raw assets. Those are the recorded videos. And then once the video editor is done, all those final assets that need to be dropped in for review and then finally distribution. And we also have easy links to those raw assets and then the final assets as well. So if I click this, it's gonna go right to the raw assets folder. And likewise, if I click this, it's gonna go right to the final assets. You can see that. And then as this project goes through the various stages, I can move it to edit or done and then finally close that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to done so that it doesn't totally clear it out of the system. And you'll notice that over here in the event types, I've also marked the interviews as content that should be repurposed. And so if we come back to events here and go to the repurpose workflow, we are going to see this interview with Gary Vee also showing up in this workflow so that we can also pick clips and then edit those clips and then finally move it to done once those clips have been created. And we can also customize those cards so that people can get easy access to those various folders as well. So I can come down here and click this and see the final assets or the raw assets. That way anybody in the system can get easy access to those things. As well, I might want the main folder. Really anything that you have here as a column, you can add to these cards here. And then of course you can also order them. This looks a little wonky. I want the event type at the top. And then once that's all done, you can move that to closed as well. And then we can also have an archive of all of the previous events. We can just take a look here. And then what's nice about that is that we're gonna have a nice storage of all the different projects that we've recorded, the recording date, the publish date, and easy links to the folders where those were recorded. And to show you how that automation works, the one that creates all of these different folders, it's pretty simple. I have a view here, I could probably name it better. And anytime I have a row that shows up in this view, I trigger a Zapier automation over here. And the way that I control what's in this view is I have a filter here. What I'm doing here is making sure that number one, the automation hasn't run before, so I make sure that the event folder is empty. I also make sure it has a recording date because I don't need to create folders for things that aren't ready. And then I also want to make sure that we're actually ready to record this piece of content before I trigger the automation. And then what you'll see in this Zapier automation is the trigger. Again, we're limiting it to a specific view. And then it's going to create the root folder, the raw assets folder. It's going to create the final assets folder. It's going to create a document from the template. And then it's going to take this template document and insert the variables into these placeholders here, events and notes, events and notes accordingly. And then finally, it's going to take all of this information that we created and then update the Airtable record so that we have that for the long term. And that's really it. That's how I capture the ideas, sort through those ideas, and then actually schedule them onto a calendar and then get myself ready to actually record so that the beginning of that process is taken care of. We have the cloud folder, we have the cloud structure. And so once the recording takes place, everyone knows exactly where to put those files and then everyone will know exactly where to get those files in the editing process. So there you go. I hope you found that video valuable. Now you know how to streamline and automate the content creation process, how to come up with ideas, sort through those ideas and schedule them and get the cloud ready for you to drop in those recordings and for your team to do all the editing. Make sure to check out the next video. I show you how to automate chat GPT to automatically create social media posts and descriptions for your YouTube video. Check out that video. I go in depth. I go step by step. I even help you create the Zapier automations all the way through. Check it out. I'll see you there. Have a good one.